My name is Susan Kerenen. I am a live performer. So the group is just Susan Kerenen. And what sort of music do you do? I do world music, largely known as world music, but I call it Afrofusion, really, because under that I try to do a couple of things still under the African um, feeling. So sometimes I do folk, sometimes I do a bit of reggae, like you heard on stage tonight. But largely, it's just a fusion of my traditional African instruments and rhythms, and of course the language. So it's Afrofusion. And where are you from? I'm from Nebi. It's in the northwestern part of Uganda, and we speak Alur. The people are called Alur, and the language is Alur. Okay, fantastic. Can you say something in Alur? Nebi. Nebi means how are you? Hello. Mm. And what women inspire you? Um. Strong women, really. Uh, my song, it's unfortunate you don't understand the lure, but yes, I tried to explain. My songs are really brought out from the things that I experience as a woman, or better still, a human being. But I think the bias of most of my writing is definitely to women, because I find myself identifying to what they go through more, drawn from the societies around me, the people around me, and the friends I interact with every day. My mother is a very strong woman. She's really, really strong. When she's, uh, I mean, sometimes when I see myself breaking down, crying, I say my mom wouldn't be doing this. You know, she's a strong woman. She's a pillar of whatever I'm doing right now. She's my inspiration, and she pushes me. You know, she pushes me all the time. <laughs> says, do it, do it. And how are women viewed in Uganda? How are women viewed in Uganda? Um, that, that's a relative question. You know. Um, so many perspectives of, I mean, the way women are viewed, but generally, I think they're the weaker sex. That is what they are seen as in this country. I mean, the things they think they can't do, they can't be in certain offices, their jobs they think they can't do. I mean, seeing me on a stage performing with a live band, commanding a team of 10 people, that is crazy. I mean, it's a job for a man, you know? But I've done it for five years and I'm going strong every day. So it's a relative question and it, and, and it depends on who is seeing it, from what side of the country, from what tribe, because there are tribes who look at their women like slaves. Then there are tribes like the Bachiga who look at their women like, you know, warriors. Then there are tribes like the Batoro who look at their women like the weakest of all sexes, you know? So it's, it, really, it really depends. And what do you think the main issues that women face in Uganda? are a lot of stigma on a number of things when it comes to jobs, when it comes to uh, political uh, issues, to cultural issues, uh, issues of dressing, issues of um, what you can do and what you cannot do. We are in a political situation right now and as you've noticed, if you've been in Uganda for some time, there's just one woman in the political race running for president. But she's having a hell of trouble, you know, trying to convince Ugandans that she, she can do the job. So it's really, there are a lot of stigma issues which cut across really from culture to even modern issues, really. And what does independence for women mean to you? It's an, to me, as Susan Kerenen, it's internal strength. I, I, I do not, I won't base independence on, polit, on, on politics or on monetary sta status of a woman. I think it's just the time when a woman discovers herself and realizes I can do this and this is what I am. That is independence to me. Yeah. And um, how, did, how did you become part of the festival? The f I'm an artist and I work with an organization of art, uh, Bayimba. So this is Uganda organizers approached us soon after we had just concluded our last festival, which was in September. And they said, we're bringing in another festival, so can you help us organize it? And I said, gladly, anything to improve the arts industry in my country. I'm glad to be part of it. And speaking of that, um, why, uh, what's the music industry like in Uganda? It's growing. I'm very happy because five years ago you'd not find 10 artists playing live music. It was always playback music and it was all cover songs. But right now to see that we can sustain a whole day activity like this with live band performance, with ladies on stage trying to play instruments, trying to create diversity, I think the growth is immense and I just give my country two years we're going to take on the world. <laughs> Honestly. Are you, uh, I heard that you're an ambassador for yeah. Uganda Tourism. Yes, I am. Mm. And before you were an athlete? Um, 
Well, uh, I'm an ambassador for tourism in my country. I was given the title actually two months ago because of the cultural tourism I've managed to do with the kind of work I do. It's basically my music. I sing in Allure and I'm trying to create an identity with my art. Uh, I traveled some time and realized that out there Ugandans cannot be identified with what we do. It's very difficult to point at a Ugandan when you're out there. So I said, well, there are over a hundred tribes in my country. What if we create an identity of sorts so that when I sing, people will say this is a lure coming from Uganda. I think so far so good. I've managed to do that. You've had an amazing one so far. <laughs> Thank you. So, Thanks. How did you become a musician? I, it's, it's inborn. I didn't go to music school. I just, it's, it's something I just love doing and it's really my soul. And right now it's what I live on because um, I quit my full-time job three years ago and I really live on my art. That's very admirable. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, tell me, how can this festival help uh, the awareness of uh, women's independence? I think so many women, for instance, watching Karen and Susan on stage tonight, tons of them have approached me backstage and they want to do what I do. So helping them realize their abilities is just one of the greatest things. Is there anything else you'd like to add to the interview you'd like to tell me? I would like to show what Uganda has out of the borders. I do not want my country to be viewed as like a country where there is no art, where there is no beauty. We are only known for the wars and all the nasty things that have been known about my country for years. But as you've noticed tonight, I think there's so much Uganda can offer in art. And I mean, basically art and culture, something like that. <laughs> Well, um, so many reasons. This particular venue, a few months, uh, um, a month ago, was a horrible scene because uh, two bombs were blasted here and so many people lost their lives here. So it could be one of that issue that, I mean, there's still fear attached to the place. But on the other hand, Ugandans are just getting to understand the kind of music we are doing because for years it has just been cover songs and playback music. You get such concert, uh, concerts without, with just a DJ on stage, packed millions of people. But when you say live band performances and the kind of folk music we are doing here, we are really struggling to put it out there to clean the music industry in our country. So probably that is also one other reason. Yeah, it's, it's growing. Yeah. You're doing wonderful work. <laughs> Do you have anything to write up? Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome.